Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, today, we're going to go over the uh, stable controller IDs, which is also better known as the uh, CTLR file. Um, it's very important and something I really should have touched on in the previous video where we set up MAME. Um, what this does is want to keep your joysticks, controllers, whatever you have plugged into your MAME in a stable position. So the player one is always going to be player one. Your player two is always going to be player two. And if you're going three players, four players, if you're constantly plugging in other controllers, then this is a very, very important to do. So I apologize for skipping out on this, but that last video ran pretty long. So I didn't want to overwhelm you with so much information at once. And I felt like there's enough detail that can go on in this video that it does deserve its own video. So I'm just going to run through this real quick and point out what really matters to us on this. And then I'll get started and show how to make this. Now, the beauty of this is once you get this done, it's really going to make main plug and play ready to go. All we got to do is find our device names, set them into the CTRLR file that we're going to create. And once you plug that in, uh, the controls are literally going to auto map to where you need to go so uh, stick around and we'll get this started all right so this is pulled straight from the main documents which i'll go over i'll go over this all the time i mean there's just so much in here that i tried to press into my mind but what matters right here is right here is our ct uh, rl file and it should really complete the entire file to make this where you can pull it and use it because once it's actually inside MAME to use, it really looks nothing like this. So they're not a really good default to use, but I'll provide a good default for us to use. And all you'll need to do with what I put in is just inside the parentheses, just replace that with the existing device that you're going to use. Now this is set up for joysticks and gun. We're just going to do the joy code where we'll get into the guns later on. I just kind of want to ease you into this process. So the uh, X input player one, X input player two, that's going to be like your um, Xbox 360 controllers, probably your PlayStation controllers, because those were on X devices and they really don't have their own individual names. So you will just mark those as X input player one. And whenever I show you how to find the name of your device, I believe that's just how it's going to show up anyway. So we're just going to copy and paste that in here. And that's kind of what it looks like. And yes, that's all I'm going to break down here. Just give you a quick overlook. Um, up here is the URL. So I mean, you can just pull this up if you want to get a more detailed look on it. But anyway, second so up enough of your time, let's go ahead and get this started and get it to where MAME doesn't swap your controls everywhere. All right, so the uh, file that I want to have uh, linked down into the description below is when we call it a joy code. So I'm going to open this up, and it's going to be the uh, template of it. So this is how the formation should be. It's going to start with your main config version 10. It's always going to be 10. System name is going to equal default, your input. And then is where you put your devices at. Now, right here between these parentheses, this is where you're going to put your device device IDs at. And we're really just going to copy and paste. That's all we want to do. The rest of this all stays the same. Um, if you're running a four player, of course, you would do it for all four of them. If you're running just two players, and you can just do the upper two, and then you can just delete these bottom two if you want but if you leave them there it's not going to hurt anything and you never know you might want to plug in a controller to um, take up joy code three and four okay so you're going to open up your main folder um, i have mine tucked away in launchbox so if you followed the last video with us then you're going to have in your emulators and your main with 265 and go down to your folder called the CTRLR and you're going to drop your joy code into here. Now we're going to come back out 
and we're going to open up MAME. What we need to do right here is get our get our device IDs. So we're going to open up the MAME UI, come into general settings, and from here we're just going to copy and paste. So we're going to find out which one is our player one first. So come down to input devices and be right here on the joystick. So let's see joystick one and joystick two. You're just going to double click on that. And when you get here, you're just going to mess with your buttons, controllers, and see how that gives me something going on. So I know this is joystick two. And to verify that this is not going to be both of them, I can just go down to number two. And I'm hitting this and I'm not getting any input reaction. So I know when player one is going to be player one joystick. Go back to here. Up here, it's going to say copy device ID. So double click. I'm going to copy that device. Now we're going to escape out of this. Go back to your uh, CT LRL file. Go to joy code. And then uh, we're just going to highlight all this inside the parentheses. Right click, paste, and you want everything in there. Uh, normally, oh, and you can just use any uh, text editor. I'm just using basic notebook. And um, take word wrap off it. I mean, it doesn't hurt if it's on, but it just keeps it looking much neater. And you're going to keep everything the way it is, all these spaces. You don't change anything. You just put the entire thing between the parentheses. Now we're going to go back, open up MAME, and we're going to repeat that again. But this time for player two, and of course, if you have a player three or player four, you're just going to repeat the process for those as well. Input devices, player two, moving my joystick on two, so I can tell that works. Copy my device ID, escape back out. And I'm just going to put all that right here where it says insert controller ID, highlight between the parentheses. Right click, paste, and that's it. We're done. Uh, very important, you're going to go to file and go save as. Make sure your save type is all files and just add .cfg because you want this to be a configuration file. All right, now go ahead and close that and you can open up your CTRLR. And here I have my configuration file for a joy code. I can just open it up and look at it. And that's how it is. Now go ahead and copy the name. We're going to need to make this change inside our main INI. So come down here to your main INI right here. So it's going to say main configuration settings, whatever windows you're on, 10, 11. Scroll all the way down. And you're going to see core input options. If you can read the line, it's going to be line 129. Just highlight that. I think by default, it's just going to be space. So be nothing there. Space, paste it. Got the joy code in there. So now the configuration file knows that it wants the joy code CTRLR to be our main one. So it's going to be priority over everything. And the only input we have there is just our controller order. Now we can go a deeper into specialized buttons, but that'll be for another video. This right here will just make sure your player one stay player one and your buttons will always stay the same. Okay, uh, go into our MAME now. Actually, we're going to uh, delete any uh, previous buttons we had programmed earlier. So we're going to go to your CFG and you want to have a default line right here. So it's going to, it's going to delete it. And whenever we open up MAME's going to recreate that again. But by doing so, by already assigning a joystick one to joystick one, joystick two, joystick two, our buttons are going to be pre-mapped for us. There's nothing more configuration wise outside of putting our coins in and our start that we really have to do. And I'll show you. So you go down to 
input assignments, player one controls, and over here, joystick one's already up, down, etc. Now, if you remember, whenever we set our controls in the last video, buttons one, two, and three were the top three buttons, and the top three of your joysticks is always going to be at zero, one, two. That's how it's going to default as. So I already have uh, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, and then bottom is four, five, six. And there's going to be uh, three, four, five, because these uh, buttons here actually start at zero. So I want to kind of throw you off. But that is it as far as controls go here. Um, you can just come down and uh, change your start and select though. So let's go ahead and make that quick change. Put that as my player one start. Select, I always put as your coin button. Escape out of that and go to a player two and we're going to do the same thing. Everything's already preset, nothing more we need to do. And go to our uh, start and select. All right, I think I got my start and slip backwards over here. So let me redo that. Yeah, I did. Oh, and if you do mess up on your buttons, just hit the uh, delete button and it's going to put it back at a none state. All right, now we're going to need to make uh, another change. We're going to go into other controls and we'll have to set our player one and two start again. Also, if you're on a four player, then of course you'll do it all the way to four player. So that's good. That's good. Get our coin. All right. We got that there. And uh, user interface. So uh, this is how we just escape out of the game. There's really not much more we need to do here. You can actually already navigate this with your player one joystick. The only thing we haven't unable to do yet from our control panel is our escape. So if you're using something like just a controller, a joystick controller where you can already map escape as your escape button, then you're already fine. Uh, mine, I have to use uh, arcade button configuration. So for like me, then you would just go click on it. Of course, I hit escape first. I always want my escape to be my backup. But then do it again. And I do it with my coin and start for player one. So now I got those two as my combination. And that's all you got to do. Now, I did have a question about saving games inside MAME and there's really not an automatic way to do it. I mean, I'm pretty sure there is, but I just can't even think of it on top of my head. But what you can do is you can set a save button and a load button. So just like you could in a retro arch, you'll have your save state and your quick save state. So you can just set those buttons to whatever you want. And when you relaunch the game, it's going to pick right back up where you left. So if you want to get into doing that, that's how you can do it. And that is it as far as that part goes. Return to our previous menu and save, save, save. Always be sure to save. Now, if you uh, have a mouse ball or a track ball, come into your input assignments. I'm sorry. Input device options. And then you can just change all this through here. So I'm on mouse, so I'm just going to switch this to mouse, mouse, and of course that's already mouse. And I'll leave that for now. And if you don't do that, your uh, mouse is not going to activate in games like Centipede or Marble Madness or anything else you want to use that for. And save, 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 save your settings so you don't have to do this all over again. All right, go ahead and hit escape. 
And uh, one more thing that I like to do, I already have my button set up and I, I just kind of like to ensure that nothing gets messed up. So you can set your uh, default, your uh, default config file to read only. So all these right here, just ensure it stays this way. I just right click it and set it to uh, read only because you know MAME can get pretty finicky at times when it shouldn't be and this may be an overkill but I'd rather have an overkill than do all this over again now if you do need to redo the buttons in your uh, default you'll have to come back and map this as undefaulted or as as not read only Okay, now let's go ahead and do a quick test. So I'm just going to open up one of these main games. And of course, a good way to test is always Street Fighter. If everything runs good on the line as it needs to, then I know my controls are set up the way they need to be. And Champion Edition's always been my favorite. And I think it's just more of a nostalgic value for it. So get through our warning. Um, remember, kids, say no to drugs. I don't know if this version has that. All right. All right, so we got our coins in. We got player two, player one. All right, so we already know our coins are good, our start's good. We punch, medium punch, strong punch. We kick, medium kick, strong kick. Over here, punch. All right, and everything looks good. Now, for other games that are not Street Fighter style, uh, Mortal Kombat, you will need to go into the game and change the button mapping for that. I think they have one of the block buttons where the low kick is so all you would do is just flop those around um any other games your top two and three buttons are going to be those games priorities so just keep that in mind and anyways that is it um we'll go into more detail on the ccrlr stuff we can do uh, later on we can custom map it for neo geo we can custom map it for other BIOS, other sources, or just other system manufacturers. I mean, we can go real deep into it, but this will definitely take care of the issue that a lot of people are going to have, and that is just main swapping stuff around on you. So just this little bit right here will keep all that from happening. Again, the template's going to be in the description below. So anyways, I hope this helped you out. If it did, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe and definitely share with other people if you think this can help somebody if it helped you out it might help them out and all the views counts and the hours watched always helps me anyways i'll catch you all next time and you have a great day